Hello and welcome to this fifth video from teachmeanatomy.info um, This video will be on really basic uh, knee x-ray interpretation As usual I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff um, So please consult sort of teachmeanatomy.info and your other uh, revision resources um, I'd like to thank as usual x-ray2000 for the use of uh, these images um, so let's begin. So this is an AP knee x-ray. As usual we want to check marker so we know it's a right knee. We would check details wherever those may be on the screen to make sure we've got the right person and the right day, the correct x-ray, the latest x-ray that we want to see. And then just to go over some basic anatomy on the AP, that's anterior posterior x-ray. So this image is taken with the patient laying their leg with their toes pointing up onto a film and the x-rays enter from kneecap to the back and that produces this image. So we have here the femur, the lateral and medial epicondyles and lateral and medial condyles of the femur. Here is the shadow of the patella which you can see there and then here's the tibia and we can see here the tibial plateaus and the intercondylar eminence and then we can see here the head and neck of fibula here's the fibula and of course as usual the grey of soft tissue shadows and the black of air surrounding and then we can see a normal lateral in the x-ray so here again we have the femur with the condyles nicely superimposed so you know it's a, a good quality x-ray because if it was rotated to one side you would see a little bit poking out the back here and that would be a less than optimal x-ray here again we have the patella and intercondylar eminence of the tibia, body of the tibia, and the fibula here, tibio fibula joint, and soft tissues again. On x rays, of course, you can't see the soft tissues, so as usual, so we can't see the menisci, which are what fill this space between the femur and the tibia. So, this x ray obviously looks very much different this AP view of a knee and that's because this is the normal uh, AP knee x-ray of a three-year-old three-year-old child um, so we can see here no real sign of a patella as far as I can see on this not very good quality image and you can see the normal epiphyseal growth plate and ossification centers so this is a normal appearance of a very young child's knee and again here on the lateral we can see perhaps the slight hint of a patella forming there and again normal anatomy for a young child still growing and then we see here here's the lateral knee x-ray of a 12 year old so now we've got a, a proper patella there but still this slightly raggedy appearance and these epithelial growth plates so all normal for uh, you know for a pediatric patient. So now, other little things that you might notice on a normal knee X-ray. I just thought I'd point out this little thing here, which we call a fabella, a fabella, F-A-B-E-L-L-A, and that's just uh, a normal sesamoid bone, you know, much like the patella, that just sits in the posterior of the knee. So you may see that on. Uh, a few x-rays and a good way of telling whether or not it's a fracture fragment or just a normal thing is things like these tend to be nicely rounded you know they don't look jagged and there's no obvious place that they've been pulled off from like an avulsion fracture so an important thing to remember really here's another view that you may see sometimes of a knee um, if anyone ever shows you it uh, just for this moment you know early on in your course just remember it's called a skyline view for clear reasons, you know, I guess it's meant to be a skyline with the sun rising so it's a skyline view 
uh, just to see the space between the patella and the femur nice and clear. So next we see here uh, we can have various fractures from extremely obvious in this case so this is a comminuted fracture um, be quite foolish to miss this really very likely to be from kind of high impact trauma such as an RTA and then we can have uh, slightly less obvious but still fairly obvious fractures such as this tibial plateau fracture as it's called this is a lateral tibial plateau fracture where basically the lateral condyle has been forced down onto the lateral tibial plateau and the condyle impacts and kind of shears the plateau off so you can see the fracture line going down here and that's a fairly common fracture um, can be caused uh, from impacts to the side of the knee uh, depending which side the tibial plateau is sheared and this can be fixed with plate and uh, screws. And then we can have very subtle fractures such as this one here which may not even come out on the video and this is a very subtle fibular head fracture. You can also have very small fractures, uh, avulsion fractures from these intercondylar eminences. So a tiny little bit floating in the middle there. And here we see one of these small avulsion fractures off of the medial condyle. If you're having trouble detecting a fracture, um, a good thing to look for on a lateral knee x-ray. Um, in this particular case, it has to be a certain kind of lateral knee x-ray, which is a horizontal beam lateral x-ray, it is called, which is basically where the patient has been lying fl like on their back, supine, and the x-rays have been directed horizontally through their knee. So here we can see what's happened is there's been a fracture into the joint and a mixture of fat and blood can be seen here and you get a separation line and this is called a lipohemarthrosis also known as fat fluid level so here fat fluid level this line going on here um, Another obvious fracture that you can have in the knee is a patella fracture. So here we can see the patella has just been pulled apart by uh, the strength of the quadriceps and the lower pole is held by the patella tendon. And this is an AP view of a patella fracture. So you have to look carefully on the AP view to see if there's any abnormality through the patella. So there are some things that can trick you into thinking they're fractures. That it's very unlikely that you would be presented with this at an early stage, but perhaps in your clinical years, you might see this appearance. So we can see a little chunk here that isn't attached to the patella. This is actually a normal uh, sort of anatomical variant called a bipartite patella and that's completely normal it's again sort of easy way to tell is its rounded appearance and you can even have tripartite patellas so there's three pieces um, and if you actually go back to the, the fracture I showed you of the of the patella AP you can actually see it's a fracture of a bipartite patella You can also have um, dislocated patellae, so here we can see patella isn't in the middle really where it should be. We can tell that the knee is not rotated on the image because the rest of the anatomy is laid out normally, so this must be a dislocated patella. Subtle things you can see in the knee that aren't fractures, you can see this which is called chondrocalcinosis, which is uh, at this stage all you really need to know about that is its calcification in the cartilage. So here it is again, some calcification in the cartilage called chondrocalcinosis. You can, as usual in any of these joints, see uh, degeneration within the joint. So osteoarthritis, 
you can see kind of osteophytic changes um not always on every image so I, I don't believe all of the four things are on this image um but it's always good to remember the radiological signs of osteoarthritis which are osteophytes joint narrowing subchondral sclerosis and subchondral cysts here's a lateral view where you can see these osteophytic changes and uh, a treatment for uh you know kind of uh, very debilitating osteoarthritis in the knee is a total knee, repl hip, uh, knee replacement so total knee replacements uh, have this appearance on an x-ray you can also have a slightly different variety of osteoarthritis in the knee called patellofemoral osteoarthritis so as you can see there's just no gap anymore between the patella and the femur so that's it for the knee. I just thought I'd um, show you these two images before we finish. So if you just have a look at this x-ray, you can see the total knee replacement. Um, but the interesting thing about this x-ray is it's also of someone with a blown knee amputation. And here's the lateral image. So thanks again for watching one of these x-ray tutorials from teachmeanatomy.info um, so I hope this has been interesting and um, please email if there are any other subjects that you wish to be covered thank you very much